And that's what's on the menu today. Okay guys, welcome back everybody. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus channel. In today's video, we are doing the long-awaited isopod, well, I mean, isopod anything. It's been four months since I posted an isopod video. I couldn't believe it. I had to go back and lo and behold, I checked my computer. May 11th, 2020 was the last time I posted an isopod related video. So here I am to deliver. We're just gonna do a good old fashioned fun isopod tour feeding everybody. We have zucchini and dried minnows on the menu. Awesome, I hope you guys are gonna enjoy. If you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my link to my Patreon down below. Follow me on all my social media platforms. We got Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And if you're new here, I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different cool kinds of invertebrates. So definitely consider subscribing down below. Ding that notification bell afterwards so that you don't miss any of my future uploads. Uploads. would also mean the world to me if you guys could thumbs up this video helps get the content out there to a wider audience thanks to the YouTube algorithm so let's get right into it friends awesome okay everybody so as I said this is what we have on the menu so we have some dried minnows which are really good for protein and calcium because of the bones after so what the isopods tend to do is consume all the dried flesh followed by slowly getting at the remaining skeleton so be mindful if your culture isn't very developed yet. You don't want to offer them too many at once because what's left over will just kind of go bad and encourage mites to, you know, take over and thrive. And then we have some zucchini that will be cut up and provided to them according to the size of the culture. So that's what's on the menu this week. So here we have our first culture. These are the Armadillidium nasatum peach. And this culture has sort of slowly been recovering after just a few months of really not doing so amazing. You can see there's a few younger juveniles, some adults. I don't wanna mess with them too much, but yeah, I've lifted a bit of wood and I'm seeing more and more of them popping up, especially a younger generation, which is always really nice to see because you know then that there's some hardier animals that are thriving and being raised in this environment that they are now accustomed to. Always a good sign, a few more over here. So again, with a small culture this size, we're not going to go crazy. We're just going to give them, like, if this is the fish, I'm literally going to take about that much. I'll put a piece here, and then I'll put another piece maybe over here so that there's a few ranges of the food. The zucchini, we're less concerned about going bad. It'll get eaten by springtails and stuff too, but I'm going to put one piece like that in there, and that's good for them. Okay, the next species we're looking at, friends, is the Armadillidium werneri. Now, this species was really challenging for me to keep at a certain point. I wasn't having much success. And I received a new culture back in November 2019 from a good friend, Trevor, out in BC. And this culture has just been booming. As you can see, there are so many little juveniles and mankai. I'm just wondering, maybe I didn't have any females or males. But uh, yeah, like they're... <laughs> They are doing so well, as you can see. Very happy with how this species has been doing in my culture. You can see they have plenty of leaf litter, so there's no concern for that not being good enough. Ooh, look at these. So many there. They're really, really doing well. But yeah, for this amount of isopods, no worries putting a whole fish in there for them. I mean, that one looks like it's already interested. <laughs> Yep. Hello, little friend. Are you going to eat some fish? Yes, you are. And then we'll put in on this side a whole piece of zucchini like that. And that should be good for them. Oh, that was a very ambitious little one. Very ambitious indeed. So yeah, those are the Armadillidium wernerys. All right, guys. So the next isopods we're going to be looking at here are the Armadillidium albino T negatives. So these are the T negative albino armadillidiums. They're really, really interesting looking isopods, quite beautiful, and they've been doing quite well in this culture. Now you may notice here that there is a Porcilio invader. This is the sole surviving Porcilio expanses orange that I have. It's kind of a shame, but yeah, there's just one juvenile male that I have there that survived and he's lived in here <laughs> with these guys since I've had them until I eventually decide to get some of the orange expanses. So don't mind that little guy. Um, I haven't actually named him, but these are the 
inhabitants that are meant to be in the enclosure. So you can see they're such a stunning little albino. We have the T-positive albinos, so Armadillidium albino Japan. A few different kinds, but yeah, these are the T-negatives. You'll see that there are lots of mankai in here. So here's a few tiny wee ones, more down there as well. Lots of them in here. And then we also have one little Cubaris invader. I'm not actually sure that this was a Cubaris marina or if it was a Cubaris SP Borneo. So it just gets to stay here. Don't want to risk mixing anything. But yeah, these are a bunch of them and they're just incredible. They look like little, I don't even know, like pina colada jelly bellies or something. They're really beautiful little pearly gems. All right guys, so with the culture thriving this much, again, we're just gonna give a whole piece of fish there for them because that will be gone very quickly. And then they'll also receive a whole piece of zucchini. Perfect. Sharing is caring. Okay, everybody, the next species we're going to be feeding here is the Armadillidium gastroi. Uh, these are one of the largest species of Armadillidium in the hobby. As you can see, they're quite large, very tank-like. Um, I do have them breeding in here, finally. Starting to take off a little bit more. You can see there's some mankai and a juvenile. What I did notice is it seems I have two different phenotypes. So you may notice that some of them have like more minty color pattern and the other ones have a bright yellow and that's not just because one's molting and the other isn't you'll actually see there's like a distinct difference between the animals i have some larger ones that have the same thing there you go you can see the differences in those phenotypes here so big appetites on these guys they'll get a piece of fish and a piece of zucchini over here Okay, everybody, now these are one of the prettiest isopods in the hobby. I mean, really depends on your preference, but these are the Armadillidium Kluge Montenegros. And these are springtails because there are no isopods under here, it seems. Now they're probably all hiding in the moisture areas. Here we go. Here's a bunch of them. Now I noticed over time a lot of my animals have sort of lost the yellow patterning. Uh, but here you can see is a good example of one of the adults. Uh, I don't know if it's a mutation or if somewhere along the line they were crossed with Dubrovnik or something. They're maybe not pure, but I'm fairly certain they are. I recall them two years ago, all just looking like your normal loogies. But yeah, you can see they, they're losing the yellow over time. It's very strange. So I guess it's a dominant mutation. I don't know. Curious for sure. Lots of mankind here. A few adults hiding in the moss. Yeah, so here's a bunch. If you like colorful pods especially kinds that have several different colors on one body. They're great. So we'll give them some food. Moss is still moist, their moss corner. I'm gonna do a gentle spritz on this side, just a little bit. And then we're gonna give them a piece of the zucchini. Okay guys, so these are my zebra isopods, the infamous Armadillidium maculatum. So the normal form and in here you will also find my nearly three-year-old dairy cow isopod moo moo who is quite a large animal there's somewhere in here now you guys named moo moo last time here's moo moo this isopod it's kind of an interesting experiment has been in this culture since it was a little mankai that accidentally got misplaced in my original maculatum culture so Moo Moo has been living with these isopods since 2018. It's an interesting way of showing you how long these animals can live under proper care. Because you would never know how long an individual isopod was living if it were with its own species, unless you had an easy way to identify it. So yeah, Moo Moo is a really healthy, lovely Porcilio labus dairy cow. So that's Moo Moo. You can see here also that the maculatums have a few different phenotypes popping up. I'm curious if one of these is a form of albinism. I don't think it's a chocolate per se, but it's sort of just really pale and white. You can see this one seems to be exhibiting the same trait. Whereas if you were to compare it 
to the normal color, this is a good example, you can see the difference here between the two. Well, more than two now. So yeah, those are the zebras. They're doing quite nice, quite well. So we'll go ahead now and feed them. Put in a piece of fish and a piece of zucchini right there. And the substrate seems to be evenly moist here in the moss side. So we don't need to worry about that. Perfect. Hey, Moo Moo, did you want some zucchini? There you go, buddy. A little Moo Moo, just trekking along. Good job. Oh, wow, in all your years of life, just zucchini isn't good enough for you, eh? I see how it is. Okay guys, these are my Armadillidium species albino Japan. Really cool isopod. A lot of them are like a rose gold, but they start off more of a yellow when they're young and then mature into that color all over the place. But yeah, they're doing quite well. Let's offer them a little bit of food. They still have some leftover stuff over here that's molded, but they ate a lot of it, so I don't want to give them too much. Just gonna drop a little fish tail in there, piece of zucchini, and that should be good. All right, guys, these are my Armadillidium Magic Potions who have finally started taking off. They're really a must-have in anybody's isopod collection. They look so interesting. I believe these are the European line Magic Potions, not the American. kind of like the American one. I feel like they have a bit more color, but these guys look really cute too. I'm like, look at them. It kind of just seems like there's layers of color within the exoskeleton, if that makes sense. So you'll just like look at one little pod and you can see there are layers underneath. You see that? Very pretty isopods. There you go. Go ahead and do your thing. My moss is a little dry, so I'm gonna water it a bit. And for these guys, there's a lot of them. So we'll give them a whole piece of fish and a whole piece of zucchini. So this sort of feels like a save the pandas type deal. These are my Armadillidium Sorditum Tangerine. Now these guys I accidentally let get too dry a few months ago. This is one of the surviving adults. You can just see how beautiful they are for an Armadillidium. Uh, the color is exquisite. Fortunately, there are a few still in here. Lots of Mankai that are coming up in the soil. So I know that they'll make a comeback, but yeah, there's not many in. So we're just gonna put a small bit of fish for them and then just a bit of zucchini. I don't wanna overdo it. Okay, everybody, these are the Armadillidium maculatum France line. Supposedly these get a little bit larger and I feel like I've already noticed that. But what I love about them is they throw all these interesting different phenotypic expression or maybe they are genetic morphs, but very interesting coloration and patterns popping up in this culture, uh, which is super neat to see, so. They're doing fantastic, really pretty. Looks like there's sort of that light colored type in this culture too. And you have like blotched or reduced striping. So potential to isolate some traits here. Lots of isopods in this culture. We're gonna give them a nice big fish and a piece of zucchini. Great. All right, guys, these are my Armadillidium putacana. I have yet, have yet, have any of them breed. These are just dwarf whites living in here. Starting to think that maybe it's similar to the Calico Porcilio Scaber, where the males are all gray and the females exhibit coloration. I don't know, because I have a few of them in here, but all of them are gray. And so I'm concerned that that's why they're not breeding. I'm hopeful. They're doing okay. It was a really small culture and I had a few DOAs, um, but we'll just be patient and see what happens. Naturally, there's so few isopods in here, but there are dwarf whites and they're competing, so to speak. So we'll make sure they have a little bit of zucchini and a little bit of fish. So friends, hard to believe that actually concludes the Armadillidium genus. We are now looking at the Armadillos, which are a really cool genus of isopods. These little guys are actually capable of stradulating, which is where they rub tiny little hairs on their body to make a hissing or a noise when they feel threatened. Officinalis Spain here. Uh, this culture 
really didn't do so well initially, but you can see that I do have some mankai growing up now, finally. Uh, there's a few hiding down there too. So again, sort of a save the panda situation. Uh, we have a lot of the little dudes slowly growing up in this enclosure. Uh, so we'll give them a little bit of fish here. And then a tiny bit of zucchini. Like not a lot, right? Because there are not many isopods in here. And that should be good till next week, honestly. Okay, everyone, these are the Armadillo officinalis from Greece, the Greece locality. And this is a much healthier culture, doing really well. We're lucky we'll even see there's one animal that's a totally unique phenotype. You can actually see it already in the cluster. I'm gonna gently pick it up and place it here. This is a unique isopod. Oh, okay, cool. But you saw it. There's a few unique rose-colored individuals that are popping up in my culture, which is really interesting to see. I really like these guys. They get quite large, and honestly, they're bigger than most armadillidium species, which makes them quite an interesting candidate for the hobby. So they're really a must-have in your collection as well. They're just little tanks. They remind me of the ohm from Nausicaa also, so that's just a nice little factor. But look at this little guy, just moving through. Lots of mankais you can see, moving through the frass. Yeah, they're beautiful animals. Sometimes color isn't everything. For these guys, there's quite a few of them, so they're gonna get, I'm actually gonna give them two pieces of fish. Balling over here. They have their cuttlefish bone that they've almost finished. We'll have to replace that too in another video. And a piece of zucchini, voila. Okay friends, so the next species we are doing here is the Cubaris species orange tigers. And they are one of my favorite species of isopod I keep. I'm also delighted that they are doing so well. Like seriously, so well. I have quite possibly hundreds of this really rare uncommon species and quite a few interesting phenotypes as well few that are particularly dark, few that are particularly vibrant. So I'm going to start maybe isolating some of these really orange ones. There are also a few that exhibit a lot of red coloration. But yeah, the plan is just sort of to maybe at some point pick a few like that one that I really think look nice in particular and try and see if there's some dominant traits within the animals. Like look at that one. It's just it's quite, quite nice really vibrant animal there. So yeah, they're, they're doing fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and give them a big piece of fish because these guys eat a lot right here in the corner. And then I'm gonna put a piece of zucchini just over here, tuck it there for them. Okay, everybody, these are another one of my favorite Cubaris or Cubaris species that I keep. These are the Cubaris Pak Chongs. Let's have a look here. Now, I also have a bunch of Nigris cristatus living in these cultures um, that haven't really been a bother or a concern. Oh, hello. There we go. So this is one of the Pak Chongs. Whoa, friend, careful. You're going to fall. Very, very cute and beautiful isopod species. There you go, little friend. Go ahead on your way. A lot of them hide in this moss, and then I know there's usually a few hanging out under here. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's some running there. One right here. Yeah. And all the Nigris cristatus, which have seemed to have kind of become a bit less common, and I didn't even realize. So I'm trying to get more of them going. But yeah. So for these, we'll do a little bit of fish. Just going to take some like so. Drop it in like that, because there's a decent amount of isopods. A piece of zucchini, and that should be good. Here you can actually see one of the Pak Chong Mankai. Just under there. Hello, little one. Take care. Okay, everyone. The next species we're feeding is the Cubaris species Borneo. So a small species of Cubaris. It's very similar to the Cubaris marina. These are from Borneo. 
think they get a little bit larger too, but there they are. They're doing very well. Lots of mankai hiding in the soil. Yeah, beautiful little isopods. Find usually the mankai are hiding in here. So for these, they eat a lot. So we'll put a whole fish, which will probably be gone tomorrow. Piece of zucchini like that. Perfect. Okay, next is a pretty seldom seen species that really I don't even think has been described. If I had to guess, this is a Mirulanella. I'm not sure if it actually is a member of that genus, but these are the R8 duckies is what they've been called. They were essentially collected um, along a highway in Malaysia. There's a few of them in the moss and they've been doing quite well. I leave one end a little drier than the other and I usually find them kind of hanging out between the gradients, if that makes sense, a lot of the time. Yeah, they're very interesting looking. Like, I really don't know what they are. I, mean, I think they would be Marulanella, but otherwise, who knows? Very pretty isopods. Yeah, so there's lots of them. I don't want to disturb them too much, but I'll kind of just show you here. They have tunnels. Oh, geez, I don't want to. Oh, yeah, there's another one right there. Yeah, if you dig them out, like they make little tunnels kind of. And uh, well, obviously I don't want to ruin their little tunnels. So we'll leave those ones and let this guy go. Okay, little friend, there you are, be free. So we're gonna put some fish right there. Piece of zucchini a bit more. Put that in for them. Perfect. Okay, everyone. So these are my Porcilio Hoffman Segai or Hoffman Segui. Segi. These are huge Spanish giants. Like these are enormous isopods. If you can see, there's a nice sized male there. So you can see that they're males because of the aeropods on the end of their body. These guys right here. So this culture has been doing well. So with these guys, I find they can be a bit territorial. So I usually don't keep too many in one enclosure. Once they start really booming, I sell off a few just so that there aren't any issues, if that makes sense. Anyways, you know the drill. Drop a piece of fish in, piece of zucchini. Their moss back here is still quite wet. Or moist so they have enough moisture this Spanish giant species does not like to be kept very wet so lots of airflow I mean this is the lid on the enclosure you can see from here that they have a ton of airflow and uh, yeah that seems to work well for them awesome okay everybody next up are the Porcilio ornatus high yellows these isopods are stunning a must-have for any collection I mean look at these animals as you can see we have two phenotypes, the standard dark high yellow and the chocolate form, which is becoming increasingly abundant in the culture. Yeah, they're beautiful, beautiful isopods. They get to be a pretty decent size, actually. So let's go ahead and set them down here and offer them some fish. Fairly confident that they'll eat right in front of us. Yep, that didn't take long. Porcilio love their protein. So it really isn't a surprise that they'll bravely start feeding right in front of us. Now we'll take a little piece of zucchini in case they want their vegetables later. <laughs> Drop that there for them. But yeah, the culture's doing fantastic as you can see. So yeah, I guess we'll move along. Okay, everyone, next is one of my favorite species of isopod. You can already see them. These are the Porcilio werni rise. They literally look like trilobites or flying saucers. These are just stunning isopods. And I've been very fortunate to have just kind of always done really well with these. A lot of people will say mixed things about them, but yeah, mine really seem to be doing well. So there's a bunch of juveniles there and a few younger adults. They sort of have similar needs to your average giant porcilio. 
I think they do appreciate some decaying wood. I have some live moss here from a forest that was safely collected. I plan to do a video on that before winter hits here. High protein loving species. So we'll put a piece of fish there for them. And they do appreciate some vegetation. But uh, yeah, they're doing fantastic. Okay, everyone, these are my Porcilio Magnificus, another one of the Spanish giant forms. Now, the story behind these is that they crashed and there's a few of them left. Here we have a female. I think one or two of these are a juvenile male. So another Save the Panda scenario. We're just really hoping to bring these guys back. So I literally think I have three or four of them. I'm probably going to end up purchasing some off someone. Nice healthy amount of springtails and a little Nigris cristatus in there too. But yeah, really, really hopeful that can get this culture booming eventually. And they're finally starting to mature at different rates. But anyhow, we will offer them that piece of fish you see here, as well as a small piece of zucchini. And uh, yeah, be on our way. Moss is moist, perfect. Okay, everybody, the next isopods we are going to feed here are the Porcilio flavo marginatus. This was a species that I really took my time to get into keeping just because I thought the Hoffman Segeis or Hoffman Segeis were cool enough and this just seemed like something similar. But once I got them, man, did I learn to appreciate them. These animals are just incredibly beautiful. They look like they have this really cool white sheen, but that's actually part of the pattern on their bodies. And yeah, they're really active and just aware of everything. They're just beautiful isopods super incredible contrast i don't know what else to say like they're just really elegant and they get to be a decent size as well like these are younger adults but yeah they've been doing you know what i'm about to say quite well really well take your pick there's some more under here beautiful so we're just gonna gently lower this actually first i'd like to Moisten this moss a bit. I mean, this side's quite moist, but I'll put a little bit of water there, just a bit. Rehydrate this area. That should be sufficient. And now we're just gonna go ahead and put this back and offer a nice piece of zucchini there and a few pieces of dried fish. Perfect. All right, everybody, the next species we're going to check out are the Porcilio expansus white. These are arguably one of the world's, I guess, favorite isopods. You can see a few juveniles down there scurrying away. Um, they're just stunning animals. Another, oh, another juvenile. I think a lot of the adults are hiding in the moss right now. But yeah, these are just beautiful critters. You can see that they've been eating some fish here. So we're not going to be feeding them anything past the zucchini, but you can see how they sort of work away at the dried minnows. And there's still a bit of food left there. I might put a little piece, you know, I've got to spoil them a bit, but overall they don't need too much. Again, we're trying to inhibit those mites from taking off. Yes, look at all these juveniles. Really pretty. Get to be a good size too. There's a bunch of females here. Funny enough, I don't see any uh, particularly large males around. That's kind of a surprise to me. Oh, wow. Quite the uh, little group in that corner. Uh, this is a bit dry, so I'm going to gently spritz this. A piece of zucchini right there. There's a lot more I suppose than I thought. I'll put another piece of fish there. And uh, yeah, it should be good. So gently spray a little bit and this side. And gently a bit here. I don't want to go crazy because there's so many isopods hiding in there right now. So usually what I do, if anything, is I'll just kind of go along the edge so it seeps into the substrate below it. Perfect. All right, guys, these are the Porcilio Hasi. Lots of them in here. Lots of Mankai too. We actually have a male and a female side by side. Another beautiful Spanish giant species. So they like it really dry. I usually just keep this moss here in the corner moistened. So I'll add a little bit more, just like that. And some fish. 
All right, guys, this is actually a favorite culture of mine. I call it the Porcilio Skaber Party Mix culture. It just throws a whole type of funky phenotypes. Um, lots of weird mutations in this one. As you can see right off the bat, if I lift this cork covered in frost, there are just so many isopods in here with funky little mutations. Got a little bit of everything. There's some Dalmatians. They're now Koi Dalmatians. It's just super, super nice. I'll gently lower this back down. Make sure not to crush anybody. There's just lots of them and they look so good. Super cool. They're like, it's like a party mix of jelly beans or something. So we're gonna put a piece of fish right there on top, which I suspect may be gone very soon. Piece of zucchini there too. These guys eat a lot, so I'm gonna be generous with the food. I mean, they're already coming to it. You can see they find it very quickly. And um, yeah, that should do quite well for them. Okay, everyone, here we have my Porcilio Scaber Calicos. For those of you that haven't seen another one of my isopod videos, the interesting thing about this morph is that the males stay gray. So all the calico looking ones are female, but the males here are all this dark gray color. Hello, mademoiselle. You can go back down if you want. Are you trying to stay on me? No. But yeah, they've been throwing some really uh, nice animals, some nice individuals. <laughs> throwing animals. You know what I mean. I mean, look at these. Really pretty. I have heard reports of males coming out calico, which is pretty cool. I mean, it is kind of unique that the males stay gray, but yeah, there's some really interesting ones here. It's like granite or something. This one here almost looks like, uh, like the lava. Oh sure, just nibble on me, why don't you? Tch. This isopod is literally biting me. So yeah, giving them their fish. Nice piece of zucchini. And uh, yeah, should be good. Let's move on. Okay guys, these are the Porcilio Scaber oranges. Lots of these running around in here. Some interesting color variations within them. But uh, yeah, they seem pretty happy. There they are. Quite a few of them in the enclosure. A few more here. Happy pods. And as you can see, they're probably gonna start nibbling on me because they love their protein. Vertebrate, they could be vulnerable and molting. So yeah. Perfect. Those are all the Porcilio Scabers for the video. Alright guys, this is one of my favorite beginner isopod species. These are the Porcilio Lavis. And these ones specifically are the wild type, which funny enough is a less common kind usually. Um, you see the dairy cows quite often. So this is the naturally occurring form or one of the variations of the Porcilio Lavis. We have one that has decided to start nibbling on me as you can see, but very easy to keep hardy, tolerant of various, uh, I guess, parameters as far as humidity and ventilation goes. Like they can handle a lot more humidity than some of the other Porcilios that might appreciate more airflow. So they're a good, isopod that's very forgiving when you're learning if that makes sense anyways yeah so you can see they're they're really thriving in here i'm gonna go ahead and give them a piece of fish actually a few because they really are ravenous and need a lot of protein and then we will also put a nice piece of zucchini here moss is feeling pretty moist so we're good moist moss haha <laughs> and yeah we'll move on to a few other color morphs of this species all right guys, so this bin full of activity is the Porcilio Lavis orange culture. As you can see, they are very much thriving. Lots of beautiful colored isopods. I always recommend these guys to anyone that wants a really nice sized orange pod, but feels a bit intimidated by, uh, let's say Porcilio Magnificus, which can be a bit more challenging to keep. Look at all that frass falling onto my hands. Yeah, they, uh, they're they really nice pods. They look great, hardy as any other Lavis, and uh, they've really been going to town on their cuttlefish there. They're making a nice little sculpture. <laughs> but yeah, so we're gonna go ahead, you know the drill. Give them a nice piece of fish. 
I'm sure they'll run over to in a sec. Nice piece of zucchini and a little blob of fish as well. I don't know what's going on with all that, but yeah, they'll go through this very quickly because there are so many of them. All right, guys, so these are the Porcilio Lavis Dairy Cows. I would say arguably they're one of the most popular beginner isopods next to the Porcilio Scabers. Oh, there we go. There's a bunch hiding under there. And I think most of my dairy cows. Oh, here we go. So they're a very beautiful morph of the Lavis, as you can see. And they're quite affordable because they're just so prolific and easy to keep. So a lot of people have them. So I'm just going to try not to disturb these guys too much. And uh, we'll give them some food. So piece of zucchini little bit of fish here. Definitely can give them more. Put a few isopods there. Perfect. All right guys, so these are the last Porcilio Lavis that I'm gonna be showing you. They are the Porcilio Lavis white. So what it is is you selectively remove the Porcilio Lavis dairy cows that have limited patterning and eventually the result is this lovely isopod that pretty well lacks any pigmentation and they're almost solid white so they just look really cool it's another morph of the Porcilio Lavis and uh I'll give you a demonstration of how much these guys love their protein there you go see I can hand feed an isopod watch want it it's yours there you go <laughs> yep these guys love their protein as i've said he's like i'm just gonna come with you yeah there you go it's hilarious all right you can enjoy that there give him a nice big clump of it there a little more here piece of zucchini for them place that there moss is a little dry so i'm gonna spray it again it's in this corner that should be good everyone so these are the porcelianoides prenosis which are the powder blue isopods also commonly kept and used in bioactive enclosures now the thing about these ones is they are a party mix variety so lots of interesting phenotypes here uh, just to kind of spice things up yeah so it's just a bit you know nice to have the color variation very hardy species and uh, you can see that they really love their leaf litter it's pretty cool and yeah, so we're gonna go ahead now and give these beautiful isopods a bunch of fish. Just gonna drop this in there for them. It's like a huge piece of fish. And then a nice slice of zucchini right there. There we go. That should be more than enough for the whole group. Perfect. All right guys, so this is the local lads from British Columbia culture. So these are all just a bunch of isopods that were collected in BC and they've just been in here. So eventually everything like out competed each other and for the most part I think it's just P. Scaber in here. It's just a nice little culture of BC native isopods hanging out in here. Seems to be working. So it's kind of fun. Something I took back from BC. So we're gonna just give them a nice chunk of zucchini there. Dry fish. Perfect. All right.
Alright guys, so these are my Tuberillo isopods. Tuberillo SP Borneo. They're very tiny and I have a few of them in this tiny little enclosure because yeah, like I just said, they're tiny. Um, you can see it's so hard to film them. They're so small. Like that's them next to springtails. Springtails are almost as big as them. There's a few hiding there. One there. There's the one right there. And then there was one right here. They just kind of come and go when they want to eat. But yeah, just thought I'd show you guys these two. I'm not going to be adding any food for them just because they already have a decent amount and as you can see there's a small amount of mold growth so it's a good thing there's lots of springtails in here. Alright guys. Ooh. Well guys, there you have it. We just finished feeding the whole collection. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you guys in the comment section down below to let me know what is the type of future content you want to see related to isopods? Well guys, without further ado, I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see more content pertaining to the topic of keeping isopods, more collection tours, etc., definitely consider checking out the playlist up above. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. See you guys next Tuesday. Take care.